Good girl. Hi everyone, how's it going? My name's Lena, welcome to my garden. As we are finishing up the month of April, I thought I would give you a little bit of tour to see what's going on in my yard at the moment. Um, before we begin the tour, let me give you a little bit of background information about myself. I'm quite new to the world of gardening. I've been doing this for about four and a half. I think I'm going on my fifth growing season this year. Um, in 2017, when my husband and I first moved into this house, it was a brand new home, uh, a cookie cutter home on a corner lot in a new development and while things were really nice and new they were at the same time really bare and boring so I thought I would add character to my home by growing a garden and that's what I did five years ago I do most of the planting myself except when things get really heavy then I would ask my husband for help um, we both have different hobbies and this is strictly my hobby we live in zone 8b in the Pacific Northwest of Washington State if you're wondering as we go on I'd like to tell you that this is going to be a relatively short tour because um, not too many things are happening right now it's still quite early on in the season um, but there are some beautiful blooms for us to look at here and as we finish the video um, before I say goodbye I would like to take you to Thailand um, I took some beautiful footage there when I was visiting last month um, and um, I saw a lot of beautiful tropical plants I visited some garden centers and some home gardens to kind of see how people uh, garden there uh, the landscaping there is quite different than what we have here and so those are going to be the two things that we're going to look at today uh, zone 8b plants and some tropical plants of Thailand let's not waste any more time let's begin the tour let's start from the front of the house so this little area here used to be that narrow you know long narrow patch of grass that lined up my driveway um, i dug up all the lawn and i planted this flower bed instead um, the goal is to put in here as many flowers as possible that would attract bees and butterflies and you know all kinds of pollinators but right now we see this really wonderful color display that these tulips are giving um, these tulips are from uh, bulbs from two seasons ago which is quite an unexpected surprise for me because um, when I didn't dig them up uh, last season um, I didn't expect them to come back you know and give such a wonderful display like they did the first time because I read somewhere that tulip bulbs um, in the second and third year are quite unpredictable um, sometimes they are not as big or as bold or as bright but uh, not with these guys I don't know maybe next year we'll see we'll see if they will still come up and look this great um, these tulips in this container um, these are new bulbs that I planted just last fall um, I love the combination of pinks and purples these are my colors right here I love them um, in this long bed, I have quite a few uh, lavender, uh, salvias, and catmints. Um, I've got a, a, a few heathers and echinaceas and coneflowers, um, some chives, um, some rosemary and thyme. Um, I don't know, all the things that I, th I think would, you know, bring in um, some pollinators. On the other side, um, I did the same thing. I dug up lawn and I planted flowers. And these two shrubs in front of us here, uh, these are Daphne's. And Daphne's are such wonderful flowers. I never knew that Daphne was actually a flower until I got into gardening. I honestly thought it was just a, a girl's name. Um, I know Daphne from the show Frasier and Scooby-Doo. So I was like, oh, Daphne is actually a flower. But anyway, um, the flowers are kind of small and they bloom in clusters like this. Um, these two are uh, the two uh, shrubs that I have. They have like uh, white pinkish uh, flowers and they are incredibly fragrant. Like if I walk by this area within like a couple of feet, I can smell the, the flowers. Um, such powerful smell too. Really wonderful. And in here, uh, I have some more tulips, you know, to kind of keep the, the balance going um, so both sides match. And um, I have my repetition flowers like lavender, salvias, and catmints, which I see my, my um, salvias are, you know, coming up um, already. And there's my catmint. I've got a ground cover. I think that's a juga. Um, and I've, I have flocks in here. So I do have a lot of like purples um, in this bed, um, whether it's a light shade or um, darker shade. And I have quite a few pinks. So it's pinks and purples um, are the theme um, in the area. So that's the front yard. Okay, 
this is a quite a an inexpensive way to add character to your cookie cutter home if you have one like me just line up the driveway with flowers really simple okay let's walk back to the back see what's going on back there all right as we walk to the backyard uh, the first tree you'll see is this one here this is k paris magnolia um, and I think this K Paris is going on year four. It's really a magnificent tree. I love it. It's quite fast growing as well. I look forward to how much taller it's gonna grow this season. Right now it's standing already at almost nine feet. And moving on, we have some Japanese dappled willows in a tree form. And I've got two in this section right here. And these, uh, these two trees were one of the first to leaf out um, in the springtime for me. Love that about them. Um, this is Pink Princess Escalonia. It's an evergreen shrub in my zone, in zone 8B. Um, Please excuse the mess, you guys. I'm kind of in the middle of cleaning up. I've been trying to clean up the yard for the last couple of days and um, my back was hurting, so I thought, you know, I'd take a little break today. Um, and back here, I've got some beautiful hellebores that are really nice and put on some really uh, vigorous growth this season. When I first bought it, um, last season it was really small like maybe a foot tall and right now it's standing at almost three feet I really love hellebores and they're evergreen as well their leaves are so attractive huge huge leaves oh hi chipper this is one of my garden helpers <laughs> her name's chipper so hellebores, uh, I've got a creamy white variety and like a burgundy uh, purple variety. In here I've got some tulips. Um, these are also uh, uh, bulbs from two seasons ago, just like the ones that we just saw in the front. Um, but these guys, for some reason, I feel like they are not as um, large um, or tall. And here I've got a peach tree that I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to keep it because, you know, it's so susceptible to um, fungus disease. But I'm about to wait and see what it does this year. And then I have candy tuft as a ground cover in this area. Chipper! Get out of there, please! Come! Chipper, come! Chipper, come! Get out! Out, out, out! Come! Good girl. I've got some annuals right here in the front um, to, you know, as, as a reliable pop of color. Um, and these are uh, Jabera daisies. Some more candy tuft. Um, Japanese dappled willows. I have two of these uh, in a shrub form um, in this bed. Right here, uh, I've got a hydrangea, and uh, it's a white hydrangea in the middle, be in between these two uh, emerald green arborvitaes. And in the front, um, I have little gem magnolia. A little gem magnolia uh, is a lot shorter than my K Paris magnolia, as you could tell, um, and that's because I got little gem a good year after I got my K Paris. But um, if I had to compare the two, I would say uh, K. Paris has a faster uh, growth rate um, because even though it's a year older, but it's also a lot taller. Um, in the middle of the yard here, I have a autumnalis cherry tree, which blooms twice a year in spring and fall. Um, 
this wonderful shrub is evergreen in my zone and this is Victoria California lilac or Cyanophis and I believe that uh, lately it's been categorized as a native shrub in Washington state because of climate change and I love this is one of my favorite shrubs in the yard because it's completely covered with bees when um, it's blooming. Bees love the flowers of Cyanotha so much. I have two um, in front of my patio and um, over here I have uh, this small tree. Uh, this is a hydrangea paniculata and it's a variety called phantom. It doesn't look much in the spring and even in the summer but when late summer comes, oh it's glorious. Uh, I love the long like cone-shaped white flowers that it has um, we are going to skip the patio because it's a real hot mess at the moment my patio is where I keep my container camellias um, in the winter to kind of keep them protected from the elements okay so uh, let's move on to uh, this area um, in the middle of this section, this yard, which is kind of like a direct view from my patio, I planted a blood good Japanese maple. Look at this tree. Isn't it wonderful? Such a beautiful tree. I love it. I love its color. Uh, right behind it, I have uh, some heavenly bamboos. I have two of them growing in between the uh, emerald green arborvitaes. And in the middle of my heavenly bamboo, there's a spirea. Um, right here used to be a wallflower, which um, it didn't survive this winter. Um, and um, right next to it on both sides are, again, uh, perennial geraniums. And right here, I've got a container of Jabera daisy once again. I have to think of what I want to replace that wallflower. Oh, and um, I think I, uh, two seasons ago, I decided to plant some ajugas here. And it was a tiny little plant. And look how, how much it spread over just two seasons. Ajuga makes a really good uh, ground cover, by the way. Okay, I've got some more candy tuff back there, and right behind it, I just planted this uh, shrub rose called uh, Gertrude Jiko from David Austin as well. And I've got some hollyhocks and some foxgloves in this area, some lavender there in the front. Um, and in front of it, um, I have another little gem magnolia, which I bought at the same time as the other little gem, um, which is right there behind the Japanese maple tree so they are about the same size so I have one K Paris magnolia two little gem magnolias and I have this magnolia which I believe is called Susan magnolia I love the flowers of my Susan magnolia very beautiful Okay, back here, um, this is my Japanese dappled willow that I propagated from cuttings uh, a couple of seasons ago. Um, I have one more um, right there, but I think that one I propagated a good year before this little one. So Japanese dappled willows are kind of my uh, repeat shrubs to kind of, you know, keep the rhythm and the harmony going in my yard. Um, this corner, I keep another rose here. I love roses, can you tell? <laughs> this is Bosco Bell, um, and in front of her, some catmint, um, some uh, Rudolph uh, Euphorbia. I've got some grass growing there, my peonies. I have a few peonies in here, and climbing up that trellis is uh, Clematis. It's a variety called Bees Jubilee. Okay, and um, on this fence, I have some climbing roses. Uh, I've got three varieties here. Uh, this is a apricot orange one. I believe this one is Bathsheba. Um, this one is a red variety. I completely forget the name. And this one is a pink variety. And I think this is Strawberry Hill. And then some more heavenly bamboos. I have some roses in containers as well. Uh, this one is Roldal and that one is Carding Mill. And climbing up this trellis here, this is Honeysuckle 
and it's uh, that you know pink uh, with yellow uh, center and I forget the variety's name I'm sorry okay in the metal uh, section this used to be uh, nothing but grass like it, and it was too much lawn for my liking so um, again I dug up the lawn and then I planted these two flower beds and here I keep some roses uh, all the pink varieties and then I've got a rose of Sharon some more hollyhocks because I love hollyhocks um, I've got more um, perennial geraniums in here this is look at this this is such an interesting looking plant I believe this is called the silver dollar hebe and it has like such a nice like variegated foliage Alrighty, you guys, I think that pretty much concludes uh, our spring tour for the day. Uh, that's what I've got going on um, in my small little backyard garden here in Zone 8B. Now let's go and take a look at some of the beautiful tropical plants that I saw uh, during my time in Thailand last month. And here we are. Welcome to the city of Hoa Hin, Thailand. If you guys have been to Thailand before, you'll know that Hoa Hin is quite popular among Bangkok dwellers. Um, it's known as a nice little getaway uh, from the busy lives of the city. Uh, it's only a couple of hours away. Uh, I think it's about three hour drive. Um, this house belongs to one of my aunts. Uh, she actually lives in Canada with her husband, but they will escape uh, cold Canadian winters and come down here for a month or two uh, during the winter months. And while they're not here, uh, my aunt's sister and her husband uh, will take care of the landscaping for them. So they will drive down here from their home um, in Bangkok uh, to water the plants and to do some gardening work once a week. I'm not going to go into uh, the names of these tropical plants because I don't know a lot of them. Thailand is my birth country. I was born and raised here. I spent my early childhood here uh, before I moved to Canada uh, with uh, my aunt. And then I went to middle school and high school there. And after I finished high school in Canada, I moved back here to Thailand to uh, further my education. But even then, like, you know, I wasn't interested in gardening when I was younger. So I never really, uh, you know, I never took an interest in what these plants were called. Um, I just kind of saw them and I knew they were pretty or, you know, I smelled the flowers here and there. But that was pretty much it. Um, but now that I'm super into gardening, I am super curious, uh, you know, about everything. Um, every time I see a new plant, uh, things that I've never seen before, I would whip out a camera and take pictures and videos of uh, the plants. Uh, these are mango trees that my aunt has going on. She has two um, in this uh, corner and it looks really robust and, and really mature. If I had to guess uh, when this house was built, I would say probably like 10 years ago, if not more, uh, judging from the maturity of some of these trees. This home is really beautiful. This is like a Thai version of a cookie cutter home uh, that's built of concrete. Uh, most of the houses here are built of concrete, I guess, to be able to withstand the storm. Um, so Thailand has a monsoon season. Um, speaking of seasons, Thailand has three seasons and an ongoing joke among all the Thais is that Thailand, like Thailand's three seasons are hot, hotter, and hottest. <laughs> but actually, uh, their, uh, Thailand's three seasons are hot, cool, and wet. And when I went last month, it was in the middle of March, and that was, um, you know, we were nearing the beginning of a hot season. My aunt has a pool in the front of her house, which I'm going to jump in later with uh, my aunt's dogs. <laughs> I love looking at uh, these plants. I dream about one day maybe my husband and I will have a vacation home somewhere in Thailand and I already know what I want to plant. Um, this little shrub, uh, it's kind of growing like a tree and my uncle just planted these not long ago. They have really nice like uh, dainty white flowers. And now we're walking uh, back towards the front of the house. Uh, that was a glimpse of my uncle there uh, watering the plant. Um, I recognize some of these plants like that. 
I know that's an orchid. Uh, I was so surprised to see an orchid grown like that. Like here in this part of the world where my husband and I live, we have orchids, but we grow them as, as house plants and we can only buy them in containers and they flower for, uh, you know, like a few weeks and then they die. But here, uh, according to my uncle, this is how orchids grow. Uh, in the wild like so he's mimicking uh, you know as close as possible as to how they grow in the wild so they grow on a trunk of a tree um, I thought this small little shrub has some nice uh, foliage that's variegated I love variegated plants so interesting um, so this uh, the front of the house I recognize this tree uh, I saw this flower a lot in Hawaii uh, when I went to Hawaii last year. I still don't know what they're called, but they smell lovely, super fragrant. So this is the town of Wahin. This is uh, one of the closest beaches um, to Bangkok. We have Hohin and we have Pattaya. Um, even though this house is not like um, by the beachfront. It's about two, three minute walk, I think, uh, down to the beach, but we have a nice breeze going on all day. Now let's go and take a look at where the locals go and buy their plants. Um, this is one of the biggest farmers markets in Bangkok. It's located on the outskirts of town. Um, when my aunt and uncle took me there, it was a Monday, and according to them, um, this market doesn't always have this many plants, like it doesn't happen every day, uh, mostly on the weekends and certain days of the week where the vendors will get together and uh, set up shops. Um, I didn't really have time to look at all the prices of all of these plants, but according to my uncle, uh, he says that plants there uh, are pretty inexpensive, uh, except for some varieties that are super sought after. And I guess that's the same here too in the US. Um, it kind of depends on the varieties, right? Um, look at these beautiful, colorful plants. I recognize some of them because um, some of them are, uh, we grow them here as well as annuals. Um, but they, I feel like they have a lot more colors. And these colors will last all year round because you know Thailand doesn't really have cold winters. Um, I walked by a succulent store. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, buy some succulents and cactus uh, for myself too this season. Um, we'll see if I can find space for it. But um, anyway, yeah, this strip of uh, little uh, plant shop goes on and on. It seems to me like it goes on forever. And um, it was a pretty hot day when we went, uh, but I had so much fun nonetheless. I'll show you how long this strip goes um, when I get into the car and we drive all the way around. There were so many shops. I had so much fun. We were pretty tight on time, um, otherwise we would have spent more time there. Um, but this, um, yeah, this is where uh, locals go and buy their plants. Um, after this, I'm going to take you to a resort in Hua Hin, back in Hua Hin. Um, I spent my last weekend there uh, with some of my friends. 
um, and um, this resort or this hotel where we stayed I believe we stayed at the Hilton Hotel if I remember correctly but anyway their uh, landscape design was just so beautiful I was mind blown at how beautiful their uh, uh, gardens were we're coming towards the end of uh, the strip and this uh, again this farmers market is called Sunam Luang uh, 2 uh, because this was branch number two uh, there are two Sunam Luangs I believe in Bangkok all right um, let's go back to Hain to the beach and this is the hotel where we stayed did I say the Hilton earlier I meant to say Hyatt Regency I am so bad with names you guys names and places Hohin is quite a beautiful beach, um, although I've been to much more beautiful beaches in Thailand, especially in the south. But considering how close Hohin is to Bangkok, um, it's the most convenient location for uh, city people to escape to. Let's go and take a look at the hotel ground and see how they incorporate plants into the design. I absolutely love uh, their use of color, texture, and shapes. Um, I feel um, that they did such a perfect job. I really wish I knew on the top of my head uh, what all of these plants are called, but I guess, you know, it's not impossible to find out. It's just going to take some time. These are really low growing plants, like they're kind of like ground covers um, in this area. And I thought, you know, the color contrast is just super nice here. You have like lime green and burgundy. Um, there are a lot of bright colored flowers in Thailand. Um, even though the flowers are not very big, like they tend to have uh, smaller flowers that bloom in clusters, but because their colors are so bright, um, they just look like big flowers from afar. The sky was so beautiful that day too, I remember. Some of the flowers I recognize, like this one, hibis hibiscus uh, flowers. Um, I have a small hibiscus tree in my garden here uh, in the US. Um, it's an annual, so um, every year I bring my hibiscus tree inside. Uh, it's not very big, it's only maybe like three feet tall. Um, but I, I like hibiscus, I like to keep them in my garden because it reminds me, you know, a little bit of my home in Thailand. I wonder, um, you know, in the hot season when temperatures get really, really high, I wonder if uh, these plants will suffer from the heat. Um, I wonder how drought tolerant they are. Um, Thailand, uh, during its hot season, it can get really, really hot. Uh, temperatures usually are in the high 90s, sometimes over 100, um, super hot and humid. And I don't know if these plants, how much they enjoy that kind of heat. This is a really beautiful hedge here with light purple flowers that are soft and delicate looking. I love uh, delicate flowers. Um, they just relax my mind. These two flowers were so beautiful. I couldn't stop staring at them. I remember telling my friends to kind of go ahead and not wait for me because I wanted to just stand here and look at them. 
All right, that uh, that was my time in Thailand. I was super happy. My goodness, I didn't want my vacation to end. The only bad thing about that vacation is the fact that my husband couldn't be there with me. He was stuck in Malaysia uh, for work, um, so we did separate trips. I went on to see my family and my friends, and I spent about nine days in Thailand um, with them. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed our little tour and a uh, short trip to Thailand. Me, I'm gonna go back inside the house and make myself a little lunch and get ready to do some more yard work. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!